Please welcome to the stage Professor Sir Hilary Beckles. Our beloved President of our Republic, our beloved Prime Minister, the Lamin family, and all friends this morning. We celebrate the contribution of a brother, an elder, our most distinguished man of letters in our society, a progeny, a genius who emerged from the grassroots of our colonial world to become a global intellectual respected on all continents for his contribution to the emergence of modernity characterized by the pillars of freedom and liberation. He was undoubtedly a master of the literary form and construct we call the novel. And when we imagine that he had mastered that form before the age of 25, having written that most extraordinary intellectual product called In the Castle of My Skin, and he had started to draft that novel around the age of 21 to be published a few years later. That should give you a sense of the phenomenal mind that we are celebrating today, a genius of the literary form. But he was very keen to allow his talents to go beyond the parameters of that literary construct. He was an extraordinary essayist. An orator with a thunderous voice and capacity. He was an artist of the public space. And together, we came to know George as a scholar, philosopher, political activist, and critically, a warrior against the evil of empire. There was an effort, no doubt, after the Clement Paine Revolution of 1937 to turn back those progressive forces that were unleashed in Barbados. There was an effort, a literary and intellectual effort, and a political effort to legitimize the concept of Little England, to brand that imagery and iconography upon our society. 
George declared an intellectual war upon that effort. How can it be, little England, how can it be celebrated as the heart of an evil empire? How can the most tyrannical system of imperial government emerging in its most matured form in Barbados, how could it be legitimized as a modern construct? Most of his utterings, his essayings, and his oratory, most of it was built around that need for the cultural revolution to free Barbados, to free the Barbadian people and to free all of the people of the Caribbean and indeed all people who had been subject to imperial injustice. He traveled to Cuba, embraced and legitimized the Cuban revolution as the Caribbean finest expression of its will to freedom. The Caribbean's most distinguished effort to chart its own sovereignty. The Caribbean finest expression of a people emerging to assert their right to be. And from his association with the spirit of the Cuban Revolution, he embraced all of those revolutionary efforts to uproot imperialism from the Caribbean. He joined forces with Maurice Bishop in Grenada. He joined forces with Walter Rodney in his effort to construct a multiracial sensibility in Guyana. And he traveled all over the world in Africa, joining forces with the effort to decolonize the continent and to allow the African people to rise. George Lemon was a Barbadian Caribbean global intellectual and cultural revolutionary. He was the most extraordinary thinker of the existential problems associated with decolonization. He was, for my generation that came thereafter, he was the patron of the anti-plantation posse and all of the manifestations of what the plantation represented and did. Its brutalization of the workers, the people, the women, the children, the evil of that history he thought had to be exposed. George Lemon represented the energy force that constituted the search for the freedom of the mind and the freedom of the soul. The eternal struggle for justice. He believed that that was not only a political construct, it was a moral and social and intellectual effort. All of his life, he dedicated to that cause of liberation, freedom, and justice. We thanked him for his vision and his leadership. We surrounded him as he aged and his powers were diminished we surrounded him with 
the friendship and the empowerment that he needed in his latter years. We at the university at Cave Hill, we were blessed to bring him into our center, into our bosom. We created a space called the George Lamin Pedagogical Center. Pedagogical because we wanted all academic thought, all scholastic visioning to be associated with the mentality George had invested in us. We gave him a room, an office, an oasis overlooking the ocean where he could come, he could sit, look out on the Caribbean Sea. It's full archipelago and where he could receive his guests, students, friends, the media from all over the world to come and hear his final engagements. We had the honor also of resurrecting after many decades BIM magazine where his early work had been published and called upon him to be the editor of this new BIM arts for the 21st century and asked him to preside over the resurrection of this literary institution. I can share with you that that twinkle of the eye that characterized George's smile, we saw that twinkle. And when we saw that twinkle in his eyes, we knew that we had done the right thing and that he was, he was pleased. And so we say farewell. We celebrate that a man, a woman can only do the best they can and to pass the baton on to the next generation. George was a philosopher of that concept and he certainly did more than we had expected of him for us, for us, the people of the Caribbean, the people of the emerging world who had been tortured for 500 years and are now finding our place. He was our enlightenment. What more can anyone give than enlightenment to show the way forward? I thank you. <laughs>